Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to ZR Chess. Um, today I'm going to go over something that I like to play in Blitz a lot. Um, not something I recommend for, you know, 30 minute tournaments or, um, or anything, you know, against, uh, you know, players over 1700 level, something like that. It's, you know, it's, it's not the soundest opening, but it is a fun one. So, um, let's get into it. It's called the Halloween Gambit, obviously. Um, so... This one is going to give up material right away, um, and I'll show you how we do it. So we start off <clears throat> e4, e5, and then we get into the four knights defense. So obviously the four knights defense is when you just have four knights on the board. Um, this is a pretty common opening. You're going to see this a lot as white and black, and this is kind of like a this looks like a throwaway move. So the Halloween Gambit goes. Knight takes on e5, and um, this is this is the whole gambit trying to open up the game, get us a lot of uh, a push and advance in exchange for material. Usually, when we do a gambit, we only give up a pawn, um, and the Halloween gambit is so controversial because we're giving up a knight. Um, so so knight takes, and um, so we just go load our knight, and now we got to make something out of it. So. D4 is a move, and we're going to try to attack back, and if not take the material back, then we're going to take back advantage in some other way. We're going to take back the center, we're going to take back, um, and it's unavoidable, we're going to take back the center, we're going to take back, um, we're going to have uh, better development, we're going to make him move his knights over and over again, and um, it's just going to be, you know, it's going to be fair play, I and mean, there's a lot of traps that black can fall into here. So, um, the best move for black is to, uh, um, go back to, to, to c6, and this is what you're going to see most often. Um, actually, that's probably what you're going to see all the time, um, because the only other move black has here, he can't, um, you know, he can't move back here, he can't go here because we're a bishop, can't go here, 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 so, um, he could go here. So... If, if he goes here thinking that this is protecting this, um, it's not going to turn out so well for him. Uh, after we go here and he moves his knight away wherever he chooses to, we're just going to pick up that knight. Um, it's always possible he'll do, you know, the, the knight sacrifice here and then, uh, and then move his knight out of the way, out of, out of harm's way. And we're perfectly fine here. Um, if you can see, we've got a great center. Uh, our bishops are ready to come out. His is not, and, and this bishop can't come three of his five squares here. Um, and then we're not going to worry too much about this open king. We should be able to be just fine just pushing him in, the, in, in here, in this corner, uh, popping that up, getting the king in, moving the rook out, and this is going to be a good game for white, uh, especially since we're even in material now. He just traded his knight back for a pawn, and, um, you know, this, this isn't that bad for white. This is pretty good. Uh, I'd rather would play white in that position. So <clears throat> instead of going there, Black's move is usually here, and so now we got to ask, are we going to push the D-pawn or the E-pawn? Because we're going to push one of them and keep up this pressure. We want to attack these knights, make a move more, and we want to gain more center. We're taking more center and maybe slip one of them up, right? So, um, my E5, if we play E5, the problem with this is that, uh, after g8, and we attack this, the knight can take right here because we don't have anything attacking this. Um, and then and then he's pretty free, he's opened up. So we don't want to push our e-pawn. Instead, we want to push our d-pawn because if he moves back, we can still push this because we have the knight and the queen still protecting this pawn over here. So this is the safest pawn, which is why we push her first. Okay, so that's how you remember that our, our safest pawn is the one we're going to push first, and then um, and then we'll deal with this knight over here. So this knight doesn't have to go back to b8. He um, he has a few moves, so he can move either of these two squares. If he moves uh, here to to b4, um, we're going to come put more pressure on him, and then he's going to have to go to a6. That's his only move. And after 
e5. Um, it's not looking so great for him. He's got to go back in the corner. He's got a knight over here, a knight undeveloped. He's got one piece on the board. We've got three, and, and things are just ready to come out rolling. Um, so it's not going to be great for him. We're going to push this and and start doing uh, start advancing on the king right away and blocking this bishop in. So that's also not a great move for black. Even though we're down a knight, it's I'd rather play white in that position 100%. So he can also go here, which is just the correct move for black um, to jump in here in this square, and we're going to keep continue attacking with uh, f4. Now, when we're attacking with f4, he also he still has limit on options, and he might make a mistake here, especially if you're playing blitz. Um, watch out for, for him making mistakes, because, you know, you could easily scoop up that knight back real quick, and then if he does make a mistake, say, moving here, thinking he's safe, and we, we take that back, then we're a huge advantage here. We've got two pieces out. We've control the whole center. He's not even debating it. He's got a knight that we're about to attack, and we've got our whole king side right at castle, and the rook's open. Incredible. So, don't have to worry about that. Um, so, when we go here, his main move is going to be back to g6. And, it's, uh, I believe it's his only safe move. Yeah, it's, it's the only safe move he has. Um, so, from here, we're going to keep on attacking with uh, e5. Excuse me, we can keep moving, we can move this because our knight is still protected, this pawn, as is our queen. And uh, his moves are completely limited now, so he can't, uh, he can't move anywhere on this diagonal. He can't move anywhere, you know, because our knight is protecting both of these. He literally only has one move and it's back to g8. So we're in the same type of position as earlier where... His knight is backwards developed. It's almost as if he never brought it out. We just got like six free turns. Um, he's got another knight that is not in the correct spot. You don't want your knight here on g6. It's supposed to be on f6. Um, so being on g6 is a little awkward. It, it stops him from being able to fiend shadow his bishop if he wants to, especially since we're coming in hot over here. And it, uh, it's going to cause problems for him that he's going to have to overcome before he can start an attack. <clears throat> so once he does that, we're going to push our pawn to d6. And... This looks um, looks a little weird, but if you look, we've got one, two pieces defending it, and he's got two attacking it. So if he goes, which his best move is to go ahead and take here, we're going to capture back with our pawn, and now we've efficiently blocked in everything. He doesn't have a pawn on either side. These are both isolated pawns, so he can't contest this pawn with another pawn. He's going to have to do it with a minor piece. Um... So this bishop is entombed right now. He can't come here. He can't come here and take. He can't fianchetto because his knight's here. And uh, and it's it's really rough for him right now. His best move at this point is to get a double attack on this pawn. Um, so he's going to try something like, uh, like queen f6. And now he's attacking with two different pieces. And from here, we're going to go ahead and throw a check in, you know, um, with queen e2. And he's gonna have to he's gonna have to try to trade queens. Um, if he just moves his, his king out of the way, <clears throat> then this is incredible for us. He can't castle, so he has an open king to attack. And uh, we're gonna have you know we're gonna have so many different attacks here coming here with uh, attacking the queen. And if he's you know not careful, which I'm not even sure he can defend this at this point, then. Um, you know, if he if he plays a dumb move, then we can go, we can go here and get in here, start beating up on that rook, threat and checkmate here. Um, there's a lot going on that, that we can do with this, so he's gonna have to be very careful. He'd probably throw a check in like this, but after after pawn up, there's really nothing he can do. Um, he's in a worse position than he was before. Actually, he has to come back here, and then we throw this in, threatening mate, and this mate is gonna be. Oh, nearly impossible to contest, um, because if he just takes our pawn here, then, uh, well, I guess it's not checkmate, but you get the idea. We're getting pretty close here. 
Um, so that's the Halloween Gambit, and that's that's how you can really mess somebody up. So as you can see, Black has to play perfectly when you're doing this Gambit in order to uh, not give the material back, and more importantly, not get checkmated. If he does play perfectly, we still have a decent size, uh, not a material, but space and uh, development advantage um, versus his material advantage. So, you know, uh, they're both, uh, they both can be long-term advantages for the game. Um, it just depends on, it depends on your playing style. If you like to risk it, um, and go big, which I, I do, I'm a big fan of gambits. Um, the crazier, the better for me. You know, I like, uh, I like trying them out. I, I wouldn't play it in a tournament. I wouldn't play it, you know, against a 2000 level player in a 30 minute game. Um, a five minute blitz all day long, even against you know seventeen hundred level players, I would play it. Um, it's a lot of fun if you're you know looking for something new. I would start playing the Halloween Gambit every now and then. It throws people off. A lot of people still haven't seen it, and when you play it like that, they're just like, "What? What is he doing? Is he giving away a night? He must have blundered." And you know you catch him off guard with the pawns, and and sometimes you can really wreak some havoc. Um, so that's all I got for you. Let me know what you think about the Halloween Gambit. I know a lot of people don't like it at all. They don't think it's, uh, it's very good, which, you know, it, you know, to each his own. So let me know what you think. And, uh, and if you have any other insights into the Halloween Gambit, I'm always looking for other lines. Um, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and, uh, I'll see you next time.